it just occurred to me that I probably should have been basing a lot more of Comictober on comics. But, better late than never. It's actually interesting. Most of the time when you come across an anthology collection like this, or any other for that matter, some of them come off a bit outlandish in their stories, I mean, obviously. But, where giant killer anthills or self-strangling hands seem to be the norm in other stories, the showcase by DC Comics titled Ghosts tries to steer clear of that. What's really impressive with this story, though, this entire collection, this anthology itself, is that it's after the comics code was enforced. So they couldn't hide behind gore or heavily suggestive themes to get that terror buck. They'd actually do pacing. Good storytelling. And it's all right here. This particular collection, though, for some reason is in black and white. This could be because you know, they could only get access to the original pages. But I think it actually adds to the vibe. Just everything about it is classic. Which is interesting because a couple of stories, if you just read them off the top of the cover, seem like the typical throwaway story. Just, you know, oh, it's that, that, that's going to be that story. And yet, things like the Sandbox of Terror and the Mothball Ghost fall in line with some of their other stories, which are actually really well paced. The artwork is phenomenal. I mean, these guys actually tried to do more of a truer tone. In fact, I believe Kubert did a few of these. That's Andy Kubert. K-U-B-E-R-T. I really hope I'm saying that name right. But facial features seem more human, which adds to it, as opposed to the old days of Tales from the Crypt or other books where Oddly enough, the characterization sometimes that they went with was a tad distracting. You understood they were trying to do more realistic stories with a very dark humor to them. You know, cautionary tales, things like that. And don't get me wrong, the viscera in those books was always on point. Human skulls clearly had the right amount of teeth. Entrails actually were the right color palettes. Blood seemed to be real. But everything else is just a bit off. Here, on the other hand, they go the other route. The characters themselves in every story look very human. Even the supernatural elements that they do go with, whether they be specter, ghoul, ghost, whatever the case may be, they try to be as accurate as possible. Even a brass statue of Kali used in one story gets every bicep right, every, every twitch of her face, every hair, her bronze head falls naturally. Very well done. Another thing that this does, unlike others, is there's no actual host. There's no cackling cadaver, grinning ghoul, or wandering-eyed witch to greet you or close out each story. There is a faceless narrator at times. Or sometimes it's one of the individuals who experienced the event. And 
and there's no specific page count either. Where other anthologies, everybody got six to eight pages to tell their story, and you had to do that with what you could. Which in itself is fine, because if you can tell a good story in six to eight pages, hey, there you go. That's impressive commitment. But in here, getting a one-page story and actually getting chills from it, that's impressive. Other stories get more, some stories get less. But that inconsistency is also what keeps you on edge. It helps. The ongoing theme for ghosts was clearly having a skeletal image on the front page, on that cover. Whether it was some dashing southern gentleman helping a lady from her carriage, only to be revealed that his bride-to-be was a skeleton the whole time. Or maybe that bus driver that you're trying to stiff, who's hugging the steering wheel a little tight, might be taking a one-way trip. Or, like our musically talented friend here, which is an excellent recreation of the cover of his particular story. I just don't know why it didn't stay on a little longer. I mean, horror stories are consistent. And thankfully, they do try a few different things. But the general theme of ghosts is your go-to. But that might be its undoing. Not the lack of viscera. Or the forced, contained vibe. But the, the very generic title. Now, this is from DC Comics. These people have been known to do outrageous stories in the past. You know, Secret Origins, Challenges of the Unknown, The House of Secrets, The Witching Hour. These had those types of stories in them as well. And yet, ghosts? Just, just ghosts. Now, mind you, the covers themselves, in the original book, you pick this copy up, you can see they're nice and detailed. It, it has that ethereal vibe to it. It seems very gossamer veil type. But it's just, at the end of the day, it's ghosts. They're good stories, though. They may not keep you up at night, but if you have a little one, you wish to entertain a niece, nephew, son, daughter. Watching the boss's kid while he goes and does whatever. Well, that should keep them up a few extra weeks if you know what I mean. Huh. Just realized it's almost time to go to work. Better get in uniform. Where the hell's that knife?
Oh, well then, that was awkward. <laughs>